In this bass lesson, you're going to learn a killer bass workout that will get you playing all over the bass in all different kinds of ways. It'll work your technique, but also help you understand music better as well. Hi, I'm Luke from becomeabassist.com, and no matter if you're a rank beginner or a pro level player, you can use the 24 exercises in this bass workout to help bolster your technique and wrap your mind around the building blocks of music. So we've got three different levels of this workout, a beginner, an intermediate, and an advanced level. And the best part of these exercises is that you can find one that pushes you no matter how much experience you have right now. And you can use these exercises to do a ton of stuff. Want to work on your speed? You can do that with these exercises. Want to work on string crossing, hand coordination, kind of just general dexterity and strength? You can use these exercises for all of that. Now you can skip to the level you want or you can go through all of them with me. But in either case, let's get started. First, the beginner level. Very simple, very cool. All we're gonna do is go up and down the C major chord scale triads. Now don't worry if you're not sure what that is, I'll show you. The whole exercise is going to sound like this. Simple enough, right? Now let's break it down. We're starting off with a C major triad. C, E, G. Third fret on the A string and second and fifth fret on the D string. Then we move up to a, a D minor triad. D, F and A. Fifth and eighth fret on the A string and then seventh fret on the D string. And then we take that exact same shape up two frets and we get an E minor triad. E, G, B. Seventh and tenth frets on the A string. Ninth fret on the D string. Now next we get an F major triad, F, A, C, 8th fret on the A string and 7th and 10th fret on the D string. You'll notice this is the same shape as our first chord, our C major shape down here. But next though, we're going to take that same shape we just played and give it uh, two frets extra, giving us G, B and D, a G major chord, 10th fret on the A string, then 9th and 12th frets on the D string. Uh, next we're going up to an A minor triad, that's A, C and E, 12th and 15th frets on the A string, 14th fret on the D string. Second last one now, we're going to go up and play B, D, F, a B diminished triad. Now this is a different shape than the ones we've had before, we've got 14th and 17th fret on the A string and then 15th fret on the D string. Then finally we're going to play our same shape as our first one, just one octave up. C, E, G, 15th fret on the A string, then 14th and 17th fret on the D string. Now that's the whole exercise. Now by the way, you don't just have to stick to the A and D strings. If you want to uh, change things up, you can swap over to using the D and G strings as well. You might do something like this. do this, then you're on the D and the G strings. That's totally fine. Now if I'm going too fast for you right now, don't worry, I've put all of the tabs and all of the notation into a handy little PDF that you can download by clicking the first link in the description of this video and filling out the form on that page, the one underneath the video. It's 100% free, my gift to you to make it easy to start using this killer bass workout. Now there are a few variations you can use for this exercise. You've learnt the core exercise, which was just to go down from the lowest note to the highest note of each chord. And the first variation is to go from the highest to the lowest note of each chord. Same exact exercise, just reversing all the chords. And again, if you want to change where you play each chord, that's not a problem at all. Go for it. Now the next kind of variation uh, it kind of mixes and matches each of the previous two. We're going we're gonna to start on the lowest note of our first chord, our C, but then we're going to start our next chord on the highest note and go down to the lowest one. Yeah? So starting on the C, E, G, we're ascending the C major chord and descending the D minor chord. And if you keep that pattern going, you get this. up one chord, down the other. 
And for the final variation, you can do the reverse of this. You can go down one chord and up the next. Down the C major chord, up the D minor chord, down the E minor, up the F major, down the G, up the A, down the B, up the C major. And of course, if you want to double your value out of all these exercises, instead of starting everything uh, down here, start everything up here. You might uh, ascend all the chords, but start up here and come down. Just like that. With this, you essentially have eight different exercise you could, ex exercises sorry, that you can use from this one idea. All right, let's get to the intermediate level of this exercise. It's very similar to the beginner one, but it adds a bit more to the mix. Instead of just using the triads of the chord scale, we'll be using the full seventh chords. Same deal as the last one. We're starting with C major, except this time it's C major seven instead of just a triad. So we get C, E, G, B, then moving up to D minor seven, D, F, A, C, E minor seven, E, G, B, D, and we can actually stay in position here for F major seven, F, A, C, E. Then we have G dominant seven, or just G seven, G, B, D, F, then up to A minor seven, A, C, E, G, then B half diminished, or B minor seven flat five, B, D, F, A, and we're back at our beginning with our C major seven. So the whole core workout is gonna sound like this. That's our core workout, right? All right then, let's get down to the variations. Of course, we just went from the root to the seventh on every chord. Now let's go backwards from the seventh to the root. Now it gets a bit interesting here. You can use the exact same patterns and shapes as we did before. So just going. Just like that. Or you can get a bit fancy and try and keep pairs of chords in position. So for example, the first two chords, C major seven and D minor seven, we can actually play both of those chords in the same position. Check it out. Yeah, just everything's right there in that one position. And if we're coming down the chords, everything's right there. Yeah, so let's try that. Pair of chords there, pair of chords here, pair of chords here, final pair of chords. Yeah, this will cut your shifts in half and make things really easy. And by the way, you can do the same thing for the core exercise as well. And I actually encourage you uh, to do both just to get familiar with the different ways of playing uh, these different arpeggios, all these chords. Now, if you do this with uh, all the pairs of chords, you get that nice kind of. Everything's nice and kind of positionally played. It's really, really cool. Now the next variation is of course to mix and match the first two. We can go up one chord and down the next, just like this. Up C major seven, down D minor seven. Up E minor seven, down F major seven. Yeah, then we can do the opposite. We can go down the first chord and up the next. So down the C major seven, up the D minor seven. Again, if you want to double your value out of any of these exercises, you can simply start at the top of the fretboard and come down. You can even link a bunch of uh, exercises together by just going up, in, up and down in one swift motion. That can be very, very cool. Again, if you need the tabs and notation for these exercises, just use the first link in the description, fill out the form on that page. All right, let's get to the advanced level of this exercise. Now this one is the exact same as the intermediate one, except we're going to be breaking up the chords. Instead of just going straight from the top, uh, sorry, from the bottom to the top of the chords or the top to the bottom, we'll be skipping around a little bit. Let me show you what I mean. Instead of going over your C major seven chord like this, you'll be going like this. From the root to the fifth, back to the third, then up to the seventh, C, G, E, B. 
Now this is just when we're going up the chord. If we're going down the chord, it's reversed. We get seventh, third, fifth root. B, E, G, C. It's a bit trickier, right? So let's go through all the variations. First one, just ascending every chord. It's gonna look like this. difficult technically as well as just trying to kind of get your mind around everything right what about the descending chords let's give them a try oh, pardon me there it is <laughs> this one is actually a little bit trickier uh, still at least it is for me it just kind of just kind of gets me a little bit Next though, let's combine the first two ideas, going up one chord and down the next. So up the C major seven, down the D minor seven. Yeah, and of course you can start by coming down the first chord and coming up the next one instead. So that'll look like this. Yeah, just like that. And just like with the other two levels of this exercise, you can double your value by starting everything up high and coming down rather than starting low and going high. So you might do something like a... Uh like that. This means that you essentially have 24 different exercises derived from this one single idea. So if you're a total beginner, start with the first variation of the first level. If you've been playing for years and want a challenge, you can jump straight to the third level and try some of the variations. You can even come up with your own versions of this exercise. And if you do, let me know in the comments. I'd love to learn from you and I'm sure everyone else will as well. Like I said, you can get the tabs and notation for all these exercises by clicking the first link in the description. Just fill out the form on that page underneath the video and I'll send it straight to you 100% free. To recap though, you learned a killer bass workout idea that's essentially 24 different exercises, so you're bound to find one that works no matter how much experience you have on the bass. Now good luck with it, I'm sure you'll do great things. I'm Luke from becomeabassist.com and I'll catch you really soon.